Good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning again, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, the um, CCIF uh, webinar series. Um, my name is Patrice Maxil. I'll be your host today. Today is December the 2nd. And um, we are going to be uh, talking about attracting and recruiting students. But before we go into the into topic here, uh, just a regular uh, kind of a housekeeping here that I need to uh, I need to do. Okay, so this is part of a um, uh, we do those webinars every uh, every four months. Basically, strategically, we try to locate them between the the face to face event of the CCIF. But uh, of course, this has all been changed for 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 the last two years. So hopefully, we're we're going to pick up on on that cadence uh, starting uh, starting next uh, next year. But uh, that's, that's what it is. We do, uh, usually on the Wednesday, we do a technical webinar and we do more of a management webinar on the Thursday, which, um, which, is, uh, which is today. And um, while we're, I'm on the slide, if you have any suggestions that you would like us to, any topics that you would uh, like us to, uh, to, uh, to discuss, even better, if you would like to present, if you would like to be on the panel, if you would like to participate, I mean, you just need to go to ccif.ca and uh, just retrieve the form uh, that, that we see here in, uh, on the screen and just fill it and complete it and send it to Caroline and uh, we'll take it from there. So we'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, to have you to come in and participate. So um, your microphone will be muted, of course. Uh, but that, that, that doesn't mean that we don't want to hear from you. That means that uh, you have to use the chat or the Q&A function if you want to ask a question to the panelists or if you want to put a comment in there and all this. I will be mon monitoring those two, those two things uh, during the panel and uh, I will bring them up as, as they come in. So feel free to, uh, to, uh, to tell us what you think or if you, have to, if you want to ask any questions along the way. Um, before we go into into topic here, I mean, of course, the, the CCIF being an, a, a non for non for profit organization, we rely on sponsors, and it is important that we thank them. So we have different level of sponsorship, and uh, you can see them right now on the screen. So thank you, everybody. That would not be possible without uh, your support, without your help, and uh, it, it's we've been blessed. It's been 22 years of very strong support from the industry in Canada, and uh, I mean, I mean, thank you, thank you so much. This is very important that uh, we that we get your support. And year after year, you guys are there, even though it's been tough um, uh, lately. I mean, you're still you're still there, and we appreciate that. We appreciate the support here. Okay, today's topic: attracting and recruiting student. Uh, the format today is going to be a, is a panel discussion. We have uh, four panelists that uh, are, are going to be contributing to this panel. I'll kind of moderate the, uh, the, the, the whole thing. We have kind of three big questions or big area that we want to discuss, but let's, uh, let's first uh, introduce our panelists here. So first we have Amber Ritter from the Collision Repair Education Foundation. So, Amber, do you want to take a moment here and introduce yourself? Hi, and thank you for having me. My name is Amber Ritter, and I am the Director of Marketing and Project Management for the Collision Repair Education Foundation. I um, started my career in youth programming, grant writing, and fundraising, and then kind of ended up in collision for the past 10 years, specifically in training and apprenticeships, and um, just have decided I fell in love, and I'm staying. So um, I am first and foremost a mother to two crazy boys, and I'm excited to be here and have joined the foundation in July of this year. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, from the Collision Repair Education Foundation also is Brendan Ackenroll. Brendan? Good morning. Thank you for having me, Patrice. Uh, just real quick, I've been in within the collision industry for just about 20 years now. I uh, actually started off on the uh, with ICAR in their marketing department, but I've been with the foundation uh, since 2009, um, working to help raise awareness and support for the high school and college collision school programs uh, around the U.S. So happy to be here and thank you for having us. Okay. So the, uh, can you, Amber and, and Brandon, at this point, just 
for the audience here, just to give a, bit, a little bit of information around uh, the, uh, the Collision Repair Education Foundation. I mean, this is a US operation, not present in Canada, but what, what does it do exactly? What do you guys are doing? Sure. So we are, like you said, a, a non-for-profit uh, 501c3 charity that's located within the U.S., but all high school and college collision repair or auto body repair um, school programs, students and instructors are kind of under our umbrella of support. So this is everything from a high school shop class, a community college, technical college. We are kind of the, the neutral body within the industry trying to rally support two in the three areas you can see. One is trying to attract students to these collision programs. So obviously lends very well to the conversation that we're gonna be having today. Support these programs. Um, and that kind of support comes in various levels and types in terms of scholarships, equipment donations, everything that these programs need to run effectively to hopefully graduate properly trained students who are ready for industry employment. And then last but not least, which is just as important is in connecting these students with the industry employers um, around the country in showcasing the many different um, career paths and career um, employers that are available within the industry. Um, so Amber, anything else to add? Yep, but did a great job, good. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, and thank you. And then we, we, while we were preparing those, uh, the, 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 this panel discussion, uh, we thought it would be a good idea to have you guys to join to join us and you know, to give us a, a view, an angle of what, what is happening so, south of the border. And maybe that can help, uh, I mean, us here in Canada to, you know, kind of say, hey, these are, th these, are these are some things that maybe we can do here. We can organize and, 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 and work with you. So thank you for, for being here today. We appreciate Absolutely. Your, your, your participation. Uh, we have Fadi as well. F Fadi Smidey. Fadi, you want to take a minute here and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thanks, Patrice. It's uh, always nice to be here with CCIF. Um, I got into the collision industry by accident about 10 years ago. Uh, you know, fell in love with the trade, fell in love with how, uh, you know, technical it is and, you know, the talent that's around it. I've been lucky to be a shop owner, a VP of marketing for National Banner. I've worked with the schools. Um, and so thanks for having me. Look forward to this conversation. Okay. And Fadi, I mean, you're, I mean, you're the CEO of the uh, Skills Trader. What, what is Skills Trader? So Skills Trader was born um, originally to, um, you know, with my struggles of how I was, you know, recruiting for my body shops. Um, at a very high level, you know, we're trying to create awareness around uh, the automotive uh, sector as well as all the other trades. Uh, we want to give tools for the professionals in the trades to market themselves better to the industry. We want to create awareness about all the great things that are happening in the automotive space. We want to connect, you know, the shops with uh, the right talent. And we also want to bring in industry leaders uh, out there that provide training so that we can um, help people go from one vertical potentially to another vertical where there's more opportunities. Um, so, you know, people call us the LinkedIn of the trades because we kind of combine this big umbrella of, uh, you know, industry technicians, businesses, uh, advertisers. So it's been a fun ride. Okay, well, thank you. Nice to, see, nice to have you with us today. Last but not least is, is Scott from uh, Sask Polytech. So Scott, you wanna take a moment here? Sure, thank you, Patrice. And thank you for having me as part of the panel. Um, yeah, my name is Scott Goodrishan. I'm the program head of the auto body program in Saskatoon. So I, I manage the northern half of the province. I also have a colleague, uh, Dale Hawkins in Regina, running the sister campus uh, in the south. Uh, I have been the program head now for seven years, but I've been in education for over 20. Uh, before that, I uh, worked in collision industry and way before that, I was I started out getting my hands greasy as a mechanic for, at our family business. Uh, in small town, rural Saskatchewan. Uh, been working very, very hard uh, here in Saskatchewan with our stakeholders, with our government insurance, uh, and to grow the program, to get people in, listening to industry, listening to our, all our stakeholders to grow our program and supply um, industry with the uh, people and resources they need to become successful. Yeah. Well, thank you. And I, I should mention that you're also part of the uh, CCIF education committee as well, Scott. So thank you for your contribution here. So much appreciated. So what well, uh, SAS Polytech, you want to take a minute here? Yes. Uh, so uh, we run a uh, four-year apprenticeship program as well as a certificate program. Um, 
currently um, our training is uh, slightly a little bit different than uh, what a lot of other schools might be doing where we have a partnership with our government insurance where they give us uh, late model vehicles like the uh, 2021 RAV4 that's sitting right behind me in the screensaver uh, and we uh, we repair them using the OE techniques, the uh, procedures, the proper tools, materials and training. So it's actually uh, forcing the instructors to keep up to date while we're teaching and training. Uh, these vehicles do go back on the road, so they have to be done. They have to be done right. Um, and with that being said, we've been doing that for over 20 years. Uh, so it really gives us some recognition with, uh, with our industry stakeholders in the province of Saskatchewan. Uh, we've also uh, have been looking at, and we are quadrupling our intakes of beginners uh, in response to industry needs. Okay. Wow. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you. So that's, uh, I wanted to uh, probably, a good thing to do, I think, is to start the discussion about attracting and, and recruiting uh, students. It's probably uh, doing some sort of a reality check here. So um, I'm just going to bring those topics here on, on the screen. So the situation uh, now, so these are the things that I put together. These are things that, that we're hearing. So there's more demand than there, than there are students. So that means that the students are in the driver's seat. And, and that, that's something that I heard that, that I, I said, well, that's, that's an interesting statement. Uh, all employers want, want the best. They all want to have the first draft selection when, when they're, they're, they're looking at schools or, or, or trade schools to, to recruit from. Uh, employers want to be on the school list. Uh, parents, uh, uh, parents are steering students away sometimes from the program, maybe because they, you know, that's not nice enough or it's too dirty or doesn't smell good. And then there's not enough students entering the trade. So I, I, I'd like to open the, 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 the question here to, uh, to all of the four panelists. So maybe Amber, we can start with you here. Yes, I think all of that is you know spot on. You know, as a whole, we have an image problem. Um, so, and I know um, what people may have used to think a body shop is. It's not what it is today. There's so much technology available, um, and it's just really we need to get better at communicating that to others getting into our industry. You know, it, it's not just about having the best or the first, but it's also about having the right fit and taking time to be able to you know, get in front of them early and often and with the right stakeholders. So this is definitely what we're hearing and what we're seeing on this end as well, you know, talent shortage. Um, and I know we're gonna get into some of the solutions later on, but all mm. of this is spot on. Yeah. Hey, Scott, I remember that the first statement, I think I think it came from you when we were having discussion. You said that they, I mean, the, 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 kind of the students are in the driver's seat here. Do you want to expand on this a little bit? Well, you know, you know, they are rapidly getting to be a bit more in the driver's seat. And uh, I am starting to field more and more calls from industry, from people looking for people. And I have a couple of, you know, key uh, phrases, you know, you know that that next uh, journey status tech, that next heavy collision person is pro is probably right in your wash bay right now. Uh, all you got to do is send them to us and get them trained, um, you know. And if uh, industry wants to send us apprentices, we'll send them journey status techs. Um, so you know, it's it's really working on that uh, relationship between industry and school uh, to make that match for the students that we are graduating to get them into the shops that they need to be getting into to make them and fill that uh, industry need. Okay. So, and, and Brandon, what about, is, do we see this trend in the U.S. as well that parents seems to be steering the, uh, the students away from the uh, automotive trades, at least the collision repair ones? Is that something that you guys see uh, in the U.S. too? We do, and it's not just the parents. Um, and there might, there's obviously an opportunity because I, there, not everyone is aware of the collision industry. You know, a lot, there's a lot more awareness on the mechanical auto service side. Um, so there's an opportunity to help make them aware of what those opportunities are. Um, but the other thing, Patrice, is that we're not alone in this being an issue within our industry when it comes to other technical trades. So the other technical trades are also facing 
an aging workforce. So okay. what I commonly used, you know, we're in a, essentially a trade war, so to speak, of we were trying to attract the best to our industry as opposed to students trying out other industries and then we're just getting the leftovers. So if we want the best students, we have a ownership of trying to make sure we're attracting the best students. So there is some ownership on the industry to get involved with these schools, to get involved not only with parents, and I know we're gonna get into a little more detail here, but also you know the administrators of these schools. So they know the line of businesses out the door that are waiting for these students to hopefully keep these programs around. Because here in the States, what we're facing a lot is programs are getting closed because schools are looking at their budgets. However, the need is increasing for people. So we're trying to keep the programs open while the demand is increasing. So there's several battles we're facing here, which I'm sure that you know, you're facing up in Canada as well. Yeah. So Fadi, as, as, a, as a previous employer and, and now being some sort of a facilitator to, 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 for, for, for people and, and jobs, I mean, what, what do you think of, of this? Is, is that, am I miss, are we missing something here or is that? Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much no, I think all. I think I think we we're we're all in agreement here. I think it really starts with awareness. People need to understand what are the opportunities in this space, and you know the potentials that they can you know for their earnings. Uh, when when I think of um, all the years that we've been around, yeah, we have a problem with with the image of the industry, right? So creating awareness around that it's not you know your your old father's body shop or what it used to be. You know how technically advanced things are, the equipment that we're using in in these shops. Uh, you know, the technological advancements really that are happening in the space make it so that, um, you know, these technicians are essentially becoming really engineers at this point, especially in the automotive side. When Brandon said that all the trades, skilled trades are feeling, um, you know, this pinch, we are competing with the other trades. So, you know, we have to do a better job on the automotive side of saying, you know, why pick us? Um, engaging parents, you know, we see it a lot. Kids like automotive. Automotive does have a cachet that some of the other skilled trades don't necessarily have. Um, but, but really it's convincing the parents. Um, I, I remember the open houses uh, with the schools that we've worked with where the kid would love you know, the panel bonding or, or, or the refinishing side of the automotive. And then as soon as the parent, you know, the parent comes by, you know, my son's not gonna be a mechanic. And I would quickly say, well, this is not mechanical, this is collision. You know, and what if I told you that a technicians, if they're good at what they do, you know, they're earning six figures and, you know, and, and they're shocked. And it's like, no, this is really what's happening out there. Um, so students are in the driver's seat. Um, there is an aging population. So there is a bit of a, a, a crisis there. But if we can raise importance and, and focus on training and, and, and really the importance of training, like Brandon was saying, that your next ATEC or maybe with Scott is actually in your wash bay. He really is. You know, and we have to change our mentality around the importance of training and training because we want to, not because we have to. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, it, going back to the first one, when we say that the, dri the, the, the students are in the driver's seat, so they're basically the ones selecting. They're, they're, they're the one making the, the choice of where they want to go. And they should. I think organizations should be better at retaining and, and attracting these, uh, these individuals. You know, we we've been in many conversations where we say this generation is, is different than the old. Well, guess what? The old generation is different than the one before it. So we need to be able to adapt to this new generation. They're looking for different things. They're looking for different um, opportunities. They don't necessarily, and, and believe me, they're not necessarily driven by money. Uh, yeah. You know, they're driven by opportunity. They're driven by ideas. They're driven by, they want to be part of an organization that's going to help them grow uh, and succeed. And if you can show them that, so Brandon, I, I see I see you nodding your head here. You feel like you you want to say something. <laughs> what's what's happening down here, and I'm not sure if it's the same in Canada. Um, and then again, this is an opportunity for us, as I'm kind of the glass half full kind of thinker. Um, some students, depending on the market areas, they're being told to pick their career path at a very early age, uh, meaning like even junior high, early high school. And I don't know about you, but you know what you know in terms of where you want to go with your career. If that's what they're being forced to explore, it's on us again to showcase the industry, even at the earlier age. You can't wait till high school. You can't wait till college. So it's an opportunity for the industry to get involved and other organizations to make sure we're showcasing not only to the students, but the parents. And I saw that there was a question about um, you know, the stigma that the, the collision or technical trades have. And I know we're going to get into a little more detail here shortly about yeah. some ways that we're interacting with the different groups. But you know, we have to get in front of them at the early age and showcase 
what those different career paths are. If you don't want to work on cars the rest of your life, you don't have to. I've been in the industry for 20 years. You do not want me working on a car, but I've been in the industry. So there's opportunities for everybody and showcasing them at an early age is always a key. Well, and additionally, teaching them how to be in the driver's seat. They're in the driver's seat, but they're pretty young to be in the driver's seat in that position. So how do you teach them how to select their first employer, how to kind of drive their career, uh, what the different opportunities are? You know, they're in the driver's seat, but they don't know how to be in the driver's seat yet. So it's, it's our responsibility as an industry to help guide them and teach them on how to make those decisions. Yeah. So, and probably Scott, just to, to, to close this one here, is there anything, is, is, there, is there such a, such a thing as a school list or a first draft selection? I mean, we're using these terms, but do you have, I mean, yourself, do you have like employers saying, hey, I want to, uh, you know, I want to have your best or do, do you, do we, I mean, I don't want to put you on a bad spot here, but I, I mean, is, is, is it true? Oh, employers always want, they always ask me, so who's your best? Of course. That's the one we want. They all, and every one of them do. Um, you know, and I, I think part of our training is that when we train them, is these students who graduate, they don't get the rubber stamp that they graduate. They've had to prove certain learning competencies. They've had to make sure that they pass the exams with a, with a good mark and so on. We have standards and they have to be met. And actually, You know, in today's age, there are a lot of uh, employers like are surprised to know that you mean everybody who applies doesn't make it. And yeah, they, because they have to as as far as me as a consumer, not even as as an educator, I want to make sure that these people that are graduating, they want to be able to work on the cars. So, yes, the, the employers always say they want their best. But you know what? Sometimes always the best student going to that shop, maybe the personalities don't match. You know, there, there has to be that bit where um, maybe, maybe the person isn't so great on their skill level, but the personalities click and they want to uh, grow them. And everybody that we graduate, we have, a, we have that uh, confidence that if they're in the right shop and they're mentored, they're, uh, for lack of better terms, given some attention, that they can all be successful. Okay. And what, what somebody might be successful at one shop might not be at the other, but it's all about getting that. You, you're saying that they're in the driver's seat. They are, but they still have to be able to match that shop. And so when you say, I want my best, it's not necessarily the best. It's getting the right fit. Okay. I like that. Yeah. It's a good point. It's a good point, Scott. Okay. Let's I'd like move. to jump in before you jump in there, Patrick. Uh, okay. uh, you know, you know me, I, Patrice, um, <laughs> you know, I think there's three things. There's, There's hard work, there's knowledge, and then there's attitude. You can be a hard worker, you can be very knowledgeable in what it is that you do, but if you don't have the right attitude going into something, um, you know, that's not going to work. That's, that's all I got to say. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good point. Okay, so look, let's look at some, some strategies or some things or actions that can be done. I, I, and some of them here, I know that there, a lot of those are already sometimes in places in certain areas. And uh, I'd like to discuss these about, I mean, do they work and what, what's the good recipe? What's the best practice to do this? So uh, I listed uh, the career days, uh, you know, putting career path in front of students, uh, getting involved at the school level. I mean, some, some co-op programs that we see a lot. Uh, I mean, fundraisers, we, we understand that uh, some schools run on a very, very low budget. I mean, I mean, I, I was a teacher for, for 10 years and this is all consumables. Everything we use is a consumable in, 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 in collision repair. So it's uh, budget needs to be adapted all the time. And how do we, how do we get started here? So who wants to, so career days? I mean, uh, I mean, what is the, uh, I mean, uh, Brandon, Amber, I know that you guys have been doing a lot of career days. I've participated in some, in some of them with you. At, 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 so what about those? Well, the foundation has been doing um, career fairs um, since roughly about 2015. Um, and these have been, and they've kind of evolved over the years, but these have been instrumental on several levels, which obviously can be replicated even up in Canada. Mm -hmm. One, initially they, they were just bringing together collision students and industry employers. So CREF would organize an event, whether it was at a school or a, a neutral facility, just so that industry could feel comfortable coming in together. Um, and then we, within a kind of like three to four hour radius, we'd invite schools to come in. 
um, which were great. They were averaging maybe 300 students per event. It's an opportunity for the students to interact and see and meet who's waiting for them, as opposed to just the instructor saying, there's these people out there, they're waiting for you. No, you got to meet them, come away with business cards, sometimes getting interviews. Um, the feedback that we got was, these events are great, you know, the foundation, but let's get as many students are there as possible. So we actually transformed them into transportation student career fairs. So not just collision students, we were inviting auto service, mechanical welding to yes. showcase them because there's some ties in to, know, you know, you might be an auto service, you maybe there's an opportunity on the collision side, but there's such a dire need that they want to see a bigger pool of students. But in addition to the obvious connection of students meeting employers, what we heard from instructors, and I'm sure Scott can provide some feedback too, is that some instructors told us, Brandon, I had students who were just starting off in the collision program. They were maybe not so interested or maybe like had half a foot out the door of going to try something else. But when they went to these events and got to see and meet who's waiting for them, it made them more interested and stay within the program, which obviously is a good thing as we don't want to lose them to other technical fields. So it's them interacting with the industry is important just as much as the instructor telling them they're meeting those people there at the event. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice. The other thing that it does is it showcases the variety of opportunity available. So there's a possibility to be a technician, but there's also a possibility to go work for a paint company or an insurance company or a OE. You know, there's all these different opportunities and getting them in front and showcasing that at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, kind of opens their eyes that there's, the path is not linear, it's global. Yeah. And, and, and you, you brought a good point. I, I went to a few uh, around here and, and we had one I know I, I, in Charlotte uh, maybe two years ago. And I, yeah, that, that's exactly right. I mean, the, you got all those, you know, employers coming in in the morning, setting up some tables, tabletops, and then buses started coming in. And then the, the, we had like three, 400 people walking and, and really interacting. And it's, I mean, it's, you know, it lasts probably three to four hours and then everything and, and that's done and it's really connecting i found those to be uh, to be quite uh, to be quite interesting um uh, scott and have you ever done something similar have you ever been involved do you know of anything some something similar being done uh, in your area oh well, you know looking at the list here uh career days uh if you go to a a typical high school career day where we have all the different schools, post-secondary institutions, uh, people have desks where they're sitting behind a desk and they've got the pamphlets out. I've got a virtual paint simulator that uh, goes everywhere with me and I don't need a table. I don't need, I'm out there in the aisle with the students and stopping them. Have you tried this? You should, this is something that we do and, and you get them engaged and, and it's not just asking the questions or whatever, but you, you almost got to get right in their face to make sure that you're standing out as a program as mm -hmm. to get them interested to make sure that there's that career path. But there's all bunch, all kinds of other things that uh, can also be done. We have what's called WIT, which is Women in Trades Training. Uh, we're going to be running a introductory course this weekend, in fact, and that is being put on by female journey status techs that uh, are graduates from our program. Uh, we also have what's called the SIEC, the Saskatchewan Industry Education Council, where we're running a boot camp, and that is winding up here on December 7th. So we got high school students coming in for two hours every week. Uh, we run boot camps. We run virtual uh, career fairs. Um, we are, before COVID, we had open houses where we were taking students and parents through all the trades to make sure that Yes, auto body is a good trade. Yes, it is nice and clean. Yes, it is a, a viable way to make a living. Um, you know, and then there's also the other thing, you know, where we're always looking at the collision industry, but what is the dramatic hook that gets a lot of people involved is working on that classic piece of equipment. So we make sure that uh, we get something like that going where every single vehicle that we have done as far as a classic has placed a uh, trophy at our uh, regional car show. So it really gives them that sense of uh, legacy, what they're doing. So when they go out there and, uh, you know, they can take all the photos of the collisions that they do, the restorations they do, and all the stuff that they do, and use that as part of their portfolio to get that job. And getting out there also on the industry level is showing them what we do at the school so that, hey, we want one of your graduates. So there's, there's, it's, you know what, getting involved. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, just just going back uh, and and I I'll get to you, Fadi, in a minute. But uh, just going back to to Brandon and Amber. So when we when you guys are doing those career fairs, the students that are coming in, what level are they at? Where, where are where are they coming from? So they're coming from a high school or post-secondary college program. So they might be just starting off their program. They might be graduating within the next couple of months. So it is a, a full group that is that's coming in from those local markets. And we're actually um, partnering with some other organizations or events where we're actually holding these events on auto show floors. So not only are we bringing the students together, but it's also helping to get in front of mom, dad, the younger generation. So we're not having to spend multi-millions of dollars on advertising and marketing. Um, and then down here as well, there's what's called World of Wheels Autorama, which is like the hot rod kind of show. And because like events in Detroit, they have, there's 5,000 students that are attending as opposed to us recreating the wheel. It's us piggybacking off of that event that already has the collective group we want. So if there are events up in Canada that are already bringing together students, I would highly recommend trying to partner with them um, as this is gonna be a collaborative effort um, to make sure that you can get out in front of those people or in front of the students um, if they're already coming together at other events. Yeah. One of the things that we do as well is we collect their information so we know exactly who's there. We know when they graduate, we can make those, you know, introductions with employers um, to kind of be able to track and measure quantitatively who's getting connected. How are they, what's happening to them after they're connected? Are they getting jobs? Yeah. Okay. Uh Fadi, I mean, I'd like to talk to you. I'd like you to to um, to uh, kind of uh, talk a little bit about career path. I mean, that's which is kind of the second one, which is you know, do do we is that what do you think of that? Is that a good use? Is that something that that is is a good idea to do to put a path in front of those young people entering the trade sure. or, or that we're trying to attract? Absolutely. I mean, having a career path and knowing where you're going to potentially could end up, it uh, does help in the decision. Um, you know, we're, we're focusing here on students and how we're going to attract new people to the trade. Well, I think looking at other demographics as well also will help relieve some of these pressures. You know, I look at, um, you know, one of our, our, our biggest partners is Women Building Futures. You know, there's 51% of the population are women out there. You know, if we can attract more women to the space, um, you know, wouldn't that be great? Um, when I look at, you know, we're fortunate to be working in both countries. You know, we look at the military down in the U.S. Um, we look at what the pandemic has done over the last couple of years here. It has shifted, you know, so many different industries. Um, when I look back at my operations, my two top technicians, one was an ex-inmate and the other one came from the city of Edmonton, was, uh, was dismantling buses. They were both journeymen. Um, automotive, you know, like journeyman automotive technicians, but they came from different areas. You know, when we're always focusing on that same, um, you know, I don't want to say fish in a bowl, but you know, we, we have to be able to look at the ocean because there's talent all over the place. Um, it, it is difficult for shops to, to take that leap of faith and say, okay, I'm going to bring on somebody new, put them through the training because it is expensive and it does take time. But if you can have the patience and find that right individual that will help get you there, you know, they, they build some sort of loyalty because you kind of put them through those motions. Highlighting the people that have been successful in our trade in, in automotive, I always, you know, we're working with 97 trades now, but I always consider automotive, you know, our trade at Skills Trader. Yes, having a career path of you, you can start off as a, as a journeyman, you might end up a foreman, you might then own a shop. You can then maybe become an adjuster all the way to potentially, you know, a position like where Patrice is in or, you know, head of an, an insurance company uh, like Tony Sotero or Joe Carvel or anybody that's, that's been successful in the, in the, um, in, in the automotive space. So yeah. I think, yeah, highlighting careers, showing who's been successful in it and, and, and looking at other demographics, uh, not always focusing on, on just, you know, what we typically do um, will yield results. So, add to what, so no, go ahead. Uh, and, and, and the question I was just about to move to you guys and say, is that too much to put the, uh, uh, these path in front of those young people? Sometimes when they are looking at a trade, maybe entering in the trade or, uh, you know, and, and or they're at school, is, is it too much? Is, 
is the generation we have in, in, in schools today, do they want to see their career all right there, right away? To, to add to, to Fadi's comments, um, what's important on um, that we've seen when it comes to, and also your question, um, Patrice, is that, you know, it's a conversation of sometimes compensation when it comes to what are these students going to make? 100% agree. I think it was Fadi that said earlier that students are not only focused on salary, but down here in the States, um, you know, you could go work for the local Starbucks and make more starting off than you would in a body shop. So that's why those career paths are important to showcase. You might be starting here, but within a short period of time, if you put in the work, the ethic, you know, the, the, the time and energy, you could end up here and make this amount just to showcase them where that's going to, where they can possibly end up. Now it's on them to get themselves there with some guidance yeah. and help mentorship, but they need to see, because sometimes they think if I can make an extra dollar here, why would I not go, you know, just do a work here, but you can showcase, yes, you're not going to make that same, you know, type of compensation in other areas like Starbucks or wherever, but that career path is visual and these students are a lot more visual hands-on. So it, I think it helps them just to showcase where they could end up in. Well, um, and career path, when you look at career pathing to you know, Patrice's point, like two aspects of it, you've got your, you know, big pie in the sky, where can I eventually be? But then you also have those little home runs on how do I get to that first level and what are my actionable items? So, you know, you're breaking it down for them. You're giving them if, if they resonate with the big global ideas, but then you're also giving them an action plan on how they get to that first level. Because you're right, they probably can't see, like I couldn't at 18 years old see myself even in the position that I'm in now. It's difficult, but you can see, you know, that first step. You can see and celebrate those wins. So, okay. I mean, looking at career pathing from both angles. Yeah, that's good. Hey, uh, Scott, tell me, the students you have, in, I mean, in, in your program now, I mean, do they... I mean, do you talk about, you know, aspirations, career aspirations or becoming maybe a shop owner or, you know, do, do you talk about that or is you really focus on, hey, let's 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 just, let's focus on learning how to paint a car here? Well, it, it, it's a little bit of both, actually, Patrice, where some of the students already come in knowing that one day they want to own their own collision shop. They want to own their own restoration shop. Maybe they want to go into insurance. Maybe they want to be. Uh, you know, both an automotive service and an auto body collision tech, you know, they, they all have their own aspirations. And, you know, part of it is what, when they're getting closer to graduation, we start talking about all of those other avenues that you might go into. Um, you know, I started out pounding metal, and then I went into painting and then collision and restoration. And, and I eventually wound up into education. So there, there are all kinds of career paths that are there. And we make sure we mention that. Uh, because it's not just so much that filling uh, that one one or two stalls in every shop with a technician, but we need the people in insurance, we need the people in glass, we need the people uh, in education and all the other facets of industry that are there to make the world go round. And this is where they get their start from. Yeah. So maybe what I'd like to discuss now is, a, I mean, you touched on that earlier, Scott, and it's getting involved at the school. And, and that is for, you know, for, for, for any employers who would like to recruit, um, what is, what's the best way for, for, to get involved? I mean, they knock on your door, Scott, they call you, what, they, what what's the best way? And, and, and Brandon and Amber and, and Fadi, what, what's the best way, the best suggestion we can do if you want to, uh, if, because getting involved, obviously, I think is a, is a key point here. But what's the best way to do that? How, how do we get involved? Not me. Oh, I'm all, uh, thanks, Patrice. I'm I'm always looking for more industry partners. Uh, you know, I'm always a phone call, an email away, uh, willing to meet anytime. Uh, I am very fortunate that uh, here at SAS Polytech we have uh, some management uh, above and beside me that are also very proactive uh, in working and fostering. Uh, new initiatives, new industry partners um, to do whatever we can to serve our stakeholders. But I'm also going to flip it back on myself is where as an, edu as an education facility, I also have to get out into industry and make myself known. Uh, if I could, I was actually invited to speak in Esteban, which is a four and a half hour drive tonight. To, uh, to make it to speak at a open hall down there. I'm just not going to be able to make it, unfortunately. So I'm doing it virtually. So okay. it's getting involved both ways. Yeah. 
Okay. But Therese, what we hear, and I think agree to this, is don't get involved when you need people. Get involved early on because a lot of instructors are protective of their students of don't come to me in the spring when you need somebody. Where were you throughout the entire year serving on the advisory board, talking to my students? So, and not only get involved with the students and the instructors, and like I said before, make sure you meet the administration, the people that are you know making the decisions on keeping these programs around, as we are seeing an alarming rate of the number of schools that are being told, if we don't get our student count up, the program is going to be closed, especially with schools looking at their budgets post COVID, you know, what it costs to run a math class is a lot different what it costs to run a body shop class. So, but the administrators, when they see, like I said before, that line out the door of businesses that are waiting for these students and said, you could have 20 times more students in your program, then it would still not be enough to, be, to fulfill the need that's out in this market. That helps influence the influencers of making sure that they understand this program is valuable to the local market and business owners. Yeah. And industry involvement also keeps the programs fresh um, and it keeps them to make sure that they are on the cutting edge of technologies of, you know, everything that they need. So you're not just coming to a school with your handout asking them to do something for you and send you their students. You're also giving back and you're helping influence these programs be the best that they can be. Agreed. Working together, creating awareness, partnerships, um, you know, 250,000 people will watch a NASCAR race. You know, there's a lot of eyes there that if we can create awareness about what we're doing, I just, people just don't know. You know, when we, we talk to people all the time and, 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 and they get shocked when I tell them about the numbers or statistics or, you know, job security. We talk about career paths. I think people want job security as well. You know, we have um, one of the talents that's part of the skills trader family, you know, 25 years old, has 26 Tesla certifications. I ask him about how do you feel about, you know, where are you going to be in the next 10 years? Do you feel like you're going to be okay and you'll have work for the next 10 years? He says, Fatty, I can go anywhere in the world and, and work and I will be in demand. I mean, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty real bold statement. He can. He can move to Germany tomorrow and backpack and yeah. fix Teslas, right? Um, yeah. So probably I, I would say, what, what about uh, maybe one more I'd like to, to point here is about fundraisers. Um, I, I mean, you guys at, 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 at the Education Foundation, if I mean, wow, I think through the years, we're talking about millions and millions of dollars that you guys have been able to get to put together to support the school, different schools program. Scott, I, I think that uh, you, you're not going to tell us that you have too much money on your budget. So I'm sure that uh, you, you can always put more and you need to be very creative. You're in a specific spot with, with, uh, with government insurance and then probably you, it, it helps, that's for sure. So uh, what is the... Um, so uh, what, what's, what's the need here? How do we do that? I mean, how, I mean, how do we support? Every school will, will take money as far as I'm concerned. Everyone that I know, I mean, they, 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 they would get some help or, or some donations and all of this. So what, what's, what's the best way to organize that? What, what's, what's the best approach for this? Should, should I just put my address in the chat so anybody can respond to check it out? <laughs> um, is that, the, is that simple? <laughs> well, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll take care of the paperwork on my end. Um, you know, what, one of the things that it's maybe not even as fundraisers, but and talking about getting involved, and we're talking about the different career paths, but what about all the suppliers, uh, welders and booths and, uh, you know, even just uh, steel or paint and getting involved uh, with, those uh, facets of industry and having them come into the school, showcasing your training, showing that you're doing a quality run program. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we could be doing as fundraisers, and, I, and I've pursued this one, is getting ongoing donations. Um, and we have a donor and alumni uh, department that works with them so they get proper recognition. So there's advertising, but it also supports our program. The other thing that can be done, and I'm working with uh, one shop right now, uh, is that they want to provide a scholarship for the students. So mm -hmm. there's there's all kinds of ways for the shops to get involved, all kinds of ways for businesses, insurance companies, uh, product suppliers. Um, again, give us a call. We'll, we'll do whatever we can we'll to find make a sure way. that we're on both sides. <laughs> 
So probably Amber, Brandon, if you can provide some examples, because I, I remember at some point here, I mean, we, we I'm, I think we contributed to redoing the floor, painting a floor in one of the collision center, a, a school not too far from here. And so there's a lot of things that you guys are doing. There are a lot of uh, very creative ways to support here. Yeah. yeah we, uh, well, there's two primary ways you, that we take donations. We take both monetary donations, so the dollars and all of that. But then we also have in-kind donation, which is products and consumables. Um, you know, talk about paint and, you know, tape and all of that. So distributing those to schools as needed, safety glasses, um, equipment, you know, even things like painting walls or um, making sure sometimes schools just needed help going through and determining what was, what was still good product and what was not good. So you can also donate your time, talent and services to these to these organizations, as well as um, your knowledge base. So giving webinars, teaching on new technologies. We have uh, people that donate their time on, on those kinds of services as well to, to make sure that these programs have everything that they need. Mm -hmm. right yeah, we have been very fortunate, Patrice, to your earlier comments that since 2009, and this is because of the industry's generosity, we've provided over $400 million worth of support to the collision programs in the states. And the vast majority to, to what Amber said has been in the form of in-kind donations. But, and it goes back to get involved at the local level is go find out what the school needs. You, you to, to figure out where do they actually need help and support. We've heard instances where there's instructors rummaging through body shop and dealership dumpsters just to get parts to bring back to their program to help these pro or help these students practice on current model parts. That's an opportunity for the business to donate parts, you know, fenders, bumpers, things mm -hmm. like that. That doesn't involve check writing, which I'm sure you know Scott will accept and other instructors will accept as many checks as they can get. Um, but we, you know, we've been able to provide scholarships, school grants, um, all sorts of types of support, and every school is in a different situation and what they need. Um, but it's a matter of, you know, rallying the industry together, like we've been able to do to kind of get that out to those that are in the most need and deserving of it. Yeah. Fadi, any, any, uh, any insight yeah. here on, on, uh, on fundraisers? Ag agreed. And I know Stefano Lessi is on, is on this thing, and I remember touring his program. Uh, and, and seeing what budget cuts look like for high school programs when when the government and industry is not behind it. You know, fundraising is great, but when we talk about in-kind donations, we've done giveaways with some of our partners uh, and it goes a long way. So, you know, it's not always about, you know, capital. We'll take checks as well. People can send us a check, but um, in-kind donations where we get to work with our partners and give back, it does two things. It shows that we're involved and it also puts the technology in their hands. And when you put their technology in their hands, you know, they might want to purchase it down the line. So, um, yeah. Yeah. No, and I, I had this this one here at the bottom for the audience, and I saw that there there are some input put in the um, in the Q and A about what's been successful for you. So please continue to share. This is going to be this is recorded, so we're going to have access to to this. But uh, maybe for the sake of time here. Going to just uh, going to move to uh, so who are the people that we deal with? I mean, where we we've been talking about doing doing some some fundraising, the career path. I mean, parents. Uh, there's obviously there's a lot of a lot of people that we. So who are the key players when we're talking about attracting and re and recruiting students here? Um, and so I, I wrote down career counselors, there's parents, instructors. There's some maybe some recruiting agencies. Who, who do we need to know? Who do we need to talk to? If, I, if I'm a repairer here and I want to you know, build a bench here and start recruiting, who do I need to talk to? Who are the key people to, to, to connect with? Who wants to take this one first? Well, I'll, I'll jump in. I think selfishly with the four panelists that we have here, uh, you, we, we sh people should be starting with the people that are on this panel. You should seek the foundations. You know, you should seek the schools that are the leaders in the industry, whether it's SAS Polytechnique or Rankin University down in the U.S., Nate here in, in our backyard in Edmonton, Alberta. Um, you know, uh, the, 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 the labor crisis situation is a real one. Uh, we should all be, you know, trying to start pulling together in the same direction so we can help solve this. Um, you know, I, I say selfishly because, you know, you know, we were created, you know, I founded this company six years ago, five years ago, to help solve this problem. And I believe like anything else, it's, it's really around awareness. It's, 
It's how, you know, what is our industry doing? Why should somebody choose automotive versus construction or elect back to what Brandon said at the beginning? We're all fighting for this talent. Our timing has never been better. Every government is putting all their government funding into the skilled trades. Um, the emergence of EV vehicles is, is, is growing across both countries. Um, timing for us to attract this talent has never been uh, greater. Um, I think industry pulling together in one direction, uh, being better at what we do and, and finding who are the leaders out there that are actually doing this because uh, you know, they're passionate about it. I think it's a great start. Th th those are the, um, because if we create awareness, then the parents are going to be okay. You know, parents, um, I, I feel like they have less and less decision-making over, you know, their children. Um, but creating awareness and, and, and finding who are the leaders out there that are really doing it, um, I, I think will go a long way because our time has never been better. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just working with, with women that we're working with, just working with the oil and gas industry, you know, we're, we've, we're about to announce a partnership with the Arizona Mining Association. You know, they have 500,000 members. I, I think, you know, I think mines are cool, but I think working in, a, in the automotive industry is a little cooler. Um, so if, if we can I just create that awareness, right? I mean, I think mines are cool, but I, I like daylight. And, and, and I think at the end of the day, we all go home to work on our 67 Shelby, or, you know, we're passionate about brakes and pistons um and tires and, and all this technology that's happening around cars yeah. um we have a great opportunity yeah so hey, amber, hey, Brandon, i'd like to hear about about your opinion here i was going to say amber has helped secure the foundation to have a huge presence in front of the guidance counselor group so i'd invite her to kind of talk about what she was helped to make possible with uh that's coming yeah. up next year that i think everyone's going to be excited about down here at least okay we have an organization called the American School Counselors Association. So they are a group of close to 4,000 school counselors, primarily in the elementary, middle school, and high school levels. So we're working with them to be able to help, um, and we'll be at their conference in a big way, You know, have a vehicle showcase everything that we do um, and everything that, a vehicle, that someone could have, um, as well as teaching them how to educate parents and how to educate students on what the opportunities there for them, that we should be a plan A and not a plan B, you know, not the C and D students because they don't have another option, but the top. Okay. And so the top option, the choice. Um, so we're working on that. That will be in um, June and then, or July actually. And then, but leading up to that, we want to make sure that that, the those types of events are meaningful and we're building impact and building relationships and not just kind of going to an event and then walking away, but going to an event and then following up and kind of making that impactful moment so that they have materials and resources to be able to teach their students that are coming to them looking for advice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Scott, anything to add here? I mean, you know what, it was, it, the question was very well answered and I really see the opportunity in you know, what uh, Fadi and uh, Amber were saying is that I think there's, there's a tremendous opportunity at the high school level to engage with the counselors and the instructors to really show how our trade has advanced, you know, in, in the automotive sector, both collision and in automotive service uh, to really get them involved and say, no, this is not the trade that maybe perhaps you think it is and that there's opportunity for these kids to really make, uh, not just have a job, they have a career, a lifelong career. So it's just as simple as a phone call or a visit. Basically, a lot of the time, that's that's a bit of what I'm hearing here. I mean, this is not sometimes that's sometimes that's all it takes to start it. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in working together and talking with that school counselor association here in the states that Amber was mentioning, we've heard, and this goes back to Fadi in terms of the time is you know time is perfect where we're hearing that the counselors they understand that they need to start accepting the the trades as a possible career path. What they're looking for is the tools and resources to educate the students. Don't rely on the counselor who has a couple minutes to try to tell them, 
what resources are available. Um, and that's something that we're going to be involved in trying to build those resources is have those ready for them to be able to utilize and how you educate, the, uh, you know, elementary student inclusion is going to be different how you out educate a, a high school student. So but those resources need to be available so that they can actually provide that information to their students, whatever grade level that they're at. And collecting better data. So I, I know I said that they're not driven by money, but we all live in North America. And if we don't pay our bills, you know, they're going to come take our house and stuff. Uh, both Stats Canada and Stats USA are not collecting the right information on what it means to become an ATEC or a journeyman bodyman. You know, we see it all the time. We, we, you, you can pick up and look at, you know, what it says to be an auto body technician in Iowa. It says you're going to make $56,000 a year. I don't know about you guys, for all the shop owners out there. $56,000 a year is not a real number. So that's not very attractive for a student that's looking at that. So being able to collect better data and putting it out there in front of them of what the potential earnings could be obviously will help as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Hey, we're, we're, wow, we're four minutes away from, uh, from, 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 from noon hour here. Maybe just a quick uh, round table, a, you know, 30 seconds uh, to each of you to uh, kind of wrap it up here. So uh, Amber, we're going to start with you. Sure. Um, so we've had you know, great conversations about how to recruit, but it's also about what you do with them after you have them. So you need to have, once you get the people, making sure that you have a plan for them and treat them you know, well, but also keep them moving in their career. So after they get to the table, what are you going to do with them? Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. Brandon? About collaboration, we can't work in these silos of I'm only going to be the one fixing it. So similar to where, you know, the foundation tries to rally everybody together, I would highly invite, you know, whether it's CCIF or whomever, you got to take off your corporate hat sometimes and everyone's got to come together to showcase the full industry. Um, so again, thank you, Patrice and um, CCIF for, you know, having us on and happy to help out anywhere in the future and trying to help, you know, provide at least some best practices that we're, we're going through down here as we're all fighting the same issue. Absolutely. I really enjoy the, uh, the input here. So we'll definitely stay, uh, stay in touch here. Scott, any final, uh, final comments here? Well, again, thanks Patrice for having me as part of this panel. I'm very honored. Um, you know, I want to say that uh, speaking from the school standpoint, we are a service provider, whether it be in Saskatchewan, Canada, the US, we're a service provider and we are here to provide a service. Come use us. Okay. Paddy? Agreed. Same thing. I mean, thanks for the opportunity to be here. It's always a lot of fun. Um, you know, if, if uh, when we talk about partnerships and, you know, everybody rallying together, I did drop my email in the chat. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're ready to do our best to help the, uh, the automotive sector relieve some of these labor pains that we're both feeling in both countries. Uh, well, thank you. Hey, I want to thank our, our panelists here today. Thank you very much. Thanks for the inputs. It's great information. I mean, we, we, uh, that's important to thank you for sharing the view of what's happening in the U.S. I think this is important. I mean, I mean, is it scalable in Canada? Is it something that we that we can do? I mean, uh, we, we probably if we don't talk about it, we'll never know. But it's uh, it was a good way to, to start this discussion. Uh, Fadi, thank you very much uh, to, for, for 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 being there today. We appreciate the feedback. Scott, thank you. And have you been flashing all your 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 cars in the back during during this this session here? There's always a new one. And are you trying to you're putting pressure on all the other schools in Canada here? <laughs> well maybe no these are all vehicles that uh, are either being currently worked on or ones that okay. they have done past and and these are all done by students and i know that there was one comment in the uh, chat where we need a, a service tech now uh you know uh something like this this car that's right behind me this was done by beginners with only six months training who started out didn't know a pink gun from a hammer and dolly okay so it we're, we're very proud of what we're what we're doing with course. students here at SAS Polytech. So. Of course. Hey, thank you. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, thanks for, for you people attending. This, this is fantastic. Thank you. A lot of activities in the chat and the Q&A. So thanks uh, for, for sharing your comments, for sharing your, uh, your ideas here. And um, thank you to all, all of our panelists. And that, of, of course, all of this would not be possible without the, uh, our, our sponsors here. So I just wanted to take a minute here and, uh, and thank them.
but um, have a safe uh, rest of your day. Uh, Amber, thank you very much. Brandon, thank you very much. Fadi, thanks. And, and Scott, thank you. And uh, it's always a pleasure working with you guys. So uh, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for attending. Bye-bye.